Joining me now is White House correspondent for the National Journal, Major Garrett, and senior political reporter for the Huffington Post, Amanda Turkle. Good morning to both of you. So if you look at the polls, Santorum is expected to win Wisconsin, D.C., Maryland. Romney. I'm sorry, Romney is. How long can Santorum stay in this? I think Santorum will stay in until the Pennsylvania primary on April 24th. And uh, last week I wrote a piece about how the two, all the campaigns have spent in relationship to how many votes they've won and delegates they've won. And if you look at that just that way, and I won't give it all away, go to nationaljournal.com <laughs> to read it. We like the clicks. Uh, Rick Santorum has gotten more out of his $13 million in campaign spending than anyone else, by far. And I talked to his senior advisor, John Braybender, he said that's one of the reasons we're staying in the race. These people who support Rick Santorum believe in it, they've done the hard work, and we're not just going to walk away from them because it's gotten a little rough for us. And, and he and wants to go to Pennsylvania and at least have a showdown with Romney there. So I don't think there's any chance, no matter what happens tonight, Rick Santorum leaves before then. Yeah, and part of it may also be this reluctant embrace, is what I call it, that we saw all those endorsements, but you don't see anybody jumping up and down, Amanda, and pounding on the desk and saying, I'm so excited about Mitt Romney being our nominee. Did you hear Sarah Palin this morning on the Today Show? I want to play that. It seems he is the nominee. Are you happy with that? Uh, you know, anything is still possible. There can still be a bit of a shakeup. And it doesn't sound like you're happy with Mitt Romney as the party's nominee. Anybody but Obama. I honestly believe that anybody running on that GOP ticket would be infinitely better than what we have today. But Amanda, did you hear that sound she made? She was like... <laughs> uh. I mean, some people are saying that it's going to be Mitt Romney, sort of whether you like it or not. I think there is. We don't want Rick Santorum. Newt Gingrich isn't going to be a viable nominee. So we're going to be with Rick, uh, with uh, sorry, Mitt Romney. And now you see more and more people getting behind him. Uh, Senate uh, Senate uh, Minority Leader Mitch McConnell basically all but endorsed him. He has Paul Ryan, Ron Johnson, uh, both from Wisconsin behind him. So the establishment is getting behind him. And it's really a question. Now, Rick Santorum, when does he stop, you know, become basically a nuisance for his party and they just want to get him out of the way? Yeah, and then when it, at what point does he look and say, look, I used to be this ex-senator who lost by 18 points. Right. Now I'm this person who just look at the numbers in the National Journal. I've made more of less right. than any modern candidate, arguably. So when does he say, you know what, I'm going to keep my status this sort of renewed popularity that I have and bow out gracefully. I don't think it happens before Pennsylvania. The one thing I think that has happened in the last two weeks is that Rick Santorum has guaranteed himself not to be Romney's running mate yeah. because he has been so very aggressive, so very negative in ways that are not just acceptable within the contours of a primary dialogue about issues and differences, but they've been personal and they've been so condemning of Romney in his entire political career, they're practically irretrievable. So Santorum does have this choice to make. When do you make that graceful exit and under what conditions? But I simply cannot imagine a scenario. Is somebody which that calling happens him well, now and saying that? No, but see, that's the thing uh, that I think we need to uh, understand. There is no calling agency anymore in the Republican Party. There is no establishment, and, and uh, Amanda just mentioned Ron Johnson, senator from Wisconsin. He was not part of the establishment three years ago. He was a businessman three years ago. No connections to the Republican establishment at all. Now he's in the Senate, so he has at least got some sort of establishment patina to him, but he's part of the new Republican Party that is Tea Party inspired and has come alongside Romney. Yes, it has been reluctant. Yes, it has been very great. Yes, it lacks all sorts of visible enthusiasm, but it's there nonetheless. Is anybody buying the argument that we heard at the top there, Amanda, that when you have this much apathy, uh, Rick Santorum says a floor fight could be energizing, it could renew the party that doesn't feel a lot of excitement for its nominee? I think it would be very energizing for reporters who would love to cover that kind of convention. But for the party, I think it could be incredibly divisive. You could see some Rick Santorum supporters come out, really not want to back Mitt Romney. And I really don't see a scenario right now where Mitt Romney doesn't get the nomination, you know, whether it goes to the convention. I mean, what could happen that other people hope is that it doesn't go to Rick Santorum. It goes to some other person who's not even in the race. That's what many people are dreaming of, someone like Chris Christie or Marco Rubio, again, very far-fetched scenarios, but I think it could be very divisive, and right now the party would really, many people in the party would really like to see everyone come together behind one candidate and focus on going after President Obama. Yeah, and meantime, you see Mitt Romney just being patient. Let me bring in Peter Alexander, who has been with the Romney campaign. He is in Milwaukee today, and I guess some changes, Peter, on the campaign trail for Romney, looking more toward the general election now.
Yeah, he really has sharpened his rhetoric in the course of the last several days. Frankly, Friday is where it all began with the speech there. He sharpened his tone on immigration, on the economy, focusing almost exclusively on President Obama. We did ask the campaign this morning their thoughts on Rick Santorum. I asked them specifically about what they think about Pennsylvania, Rick Santorum's home state, as that would be a where they in many ways are viewed as trying to kind of put a nail in the coffin of Rick Santorum here. The campaign advisor I spoke to said to me, we won in Massachusetts with 70% of the vote. Romney's home state. Gingrich won in Georgia. Santorum should win in Pennsylvania. In many ways, they're trying to build up expectations for that April 24th date, hoping that really is the end of the road for Santorum before May, where he could find success in North Carolina and Texas. They're hoping to defeat him, adding half, uh, an opening office, an office even in the state of Pennsylvania. All right, Chris. Peter Alexander, thanks. And, and you know, Mitt Romney has been on the campaign trail, answering questions, and sometimes he gets questions like this. Take a listen from yesterday's town hall. Are you worried about women voters? Awesome. I'm worried about all voters. I want to make sure we win them all. If his poll numbers are right here, and his poll numbers have been that he is losing women voters, mm -hmm. um, how does he win them back? I mean, they've been talking about, like, Ann Romney as his secret weapon. Well, Ann Romney's not a secret anymore. Uh, she's a very potent and capable advocate for Mitt Romney, and she will continue to be so. In Pennsylvania, you're going to see her all around suburban Philadelphia, continuously, and anywhere else that it's important for the Romney campaign to connect with suburban voters, male and female, okay? And to the point you raised earlier about a contested convention, that would be a terrible thing for the party and a terrible thing for Romney, because this is a hiring or rehiring choice for the electorate about President Obama. Do you fire him or do you keep him? And the alternative needs to be an acceptable one, first and foremost. But a divided party that is divided deep into August doesn't look like an alternative party that's ready if you're ready to fire the incumbent president. And that's why it would be a very bad idea for So Mitt Romney now focusing on the general election, bringing out Ann Romney more. Did you hear her on the radio yesterday? She was basically asking, is your husband a stiff? Here's what she had to say. Well, I, you know, it's, uh, I, I, guess, I guess we better uh, unzip him and let the real Mitt Romney out, because he is not. It is so funny to me that that is the perception out there, because he is funny, he's engaging, he's witty, um, he's always playing jokes. Um, he's, he's, uh, when I met him when I was a teenager, he was the life of the party. I'm having flashbacks to Al Gore's campaign. Uh, Amanda, uh, you know, this is really the $6 million question. They actually asked it to Sarah Palin on the Today Show this morning. Can you make something they're not? Say what you will, like or don't like Sarah Palin. When you saw her out on the campaign trail, she connected with people. Uh, and, and that's what got Herman Cain, uh, you know, to at least a few months uh, of this campaign season. What do they do about Mitt Romney? Well, I think you have to be careful to make the not to make the candidate into someone they're not. We saw this problem with John Kerry in 2004, where they tried to portray him as going out hunting, and it just came off to voters as very awkward and very artificial. So I think they have to be careful, but certainly sort of humanizing Mitt Romney, if you will, putting him out there with Ann Romney, with his family, is is I think very very helpful to him as the campaign is starting to realize. And in terms of moving on to the general election, I mean Mitt Romney certainly wants to do that you see him basically ignoring his other uh, GOP contenders at this point and focusing all his uh, firepower back on President Obama trying to pit it as a race between him and the president and just basically ignoring the other candidates. Yeah and you're seeing the Democrats and you're seeing uh, the Obama campaign doing the same thing. Uh, let me play for you a little bit of what uh, David Axelrod had to say. I think it's going to be the concern of the American people. He seems to be oblivious to the uh, experiences of everyday people. He says that we should just let the housing market bottom out. We should have let Wall Street go bankrupt. Any doubt what their strategy is here and, and can it work? Oh, no, and you saw it in the uh, advertisement the Obama campaign ran yesterday, the first time mentioning Mitt Romney. So the general election campaign from the Obama perspective has already begun. They're not running against any of the Republicans. They're running against Mitt Romney, saying he's in favor of big oil. His energy policies are not only reflective of the past, but they're weighted in Republican special interest politics. And drawing that of the contrast past. because they know gas prices are an issue for the president. And so everything that you're going to see in this campaign from the Obama perspective is if you may not you may not be delighted with what I've accomplished, but the alternative is worse and it is through your already insecure economic future. That is going to be the bottom line merit narrative from the Obama campaign. The president's speech today calling the Paul Ryan budget, which Mitt Romney has endorsed as 
thinly veiled social Darwinism. That is putting it very aggressively and very intently. And that's the kind of choice we're going to have in this election. It's going to be a broad and, I think, sharply drawn one, which will be good for the country. Let me circle back to tonight really quickly. Any chance of an upset in Wisconsin? I don't see it, not based on the polling data. Yeah, Amanda? Uh, no, I don't see it at all. All right, Major Garrett, Amanda Turkle, thanks to both of you. And